Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to share a tips on how to use the light table for in-betweening. What makes this light table tool so special is that you can move, rotate, and scale the reference drawing without affecting the original drawing. You can use this as a guide and help maintaining consistency throughout your animation. You could definitely find a way to do this on other software like copying the layer manually and transforming them, but it won't be as convenient as in Clip Studio Paint because the light table layer is like a duplicated instance of your layer so it will update if you make an edit to the original drawing that way you can have a non-destructive workflow and you don't have a lot of mess in your layer structure uh, this is not a beginner tutorial so I'm expecting you to know your way in Clip Studio but if you don't and not familiar with Clip Studio you can find a lot of tutorial on the tips.clip-studio.com you will need to know how to navigate in Clip Studio Paint at the very least to follow this tutorial. Before we begin the in-betweening tutorial, first we need to set up the light tables. And I will do a short explanation of each of the settings you could play with. Okay, so firstly you will need to turn on this animation cells window. And in order to do that, you need to head over to window, then you go to animation cells, then you will have this window opened. Once you have the window open, there, there are two types of these light tables in Clip Studio Paint. The first one is a specific, that each frame will have a unique set of light table layers assigned to them. The other one is common light tables. This one is more straightforward, as it will display the same light table to every single frame. And this is the one that I will be using for this tutorial, since it's simpler and it's good enough for what I need. In order to use the light table, you will need to turn on this Enable Light Table button. This is actually controlling the visibility of your light table layer. And the second one is this Enable Light Table tool. When you turn this on, you will go into this editing mode where you can move the light table layer. Actually, you don't have to click that button to go into or out of the mode. You can select the layer at the top section and it will turn off. And if you want to edit again, you can just select your light table layer and it will go straight into that editing mode again. So once you activate either the common or specific light table, the window will split into like this. The top section will show the layer of the current frame you are on. And the bottom section is your light table layer. To add drawing to the light table layer, you could just simply drag and drop the layer you want to add to the bottom section of the window. And if you don't want them anymore, you could just press the button with the trust icon over here. Additional things you can do with the light table is to add a color overlay. I have set up mine, so if you want to do that, you need to go to this layer properties. Change the mode to half color and select your preferred color. Usually I will pick a color that is easy to see, like something vibrant or a lighter color. Just make sure it doesn't overlap with your original drawing color. The next thing you might want to know is maybe if you need to do a next set of in-between, you obviously can just add the new layer into it. Or you can choose one of the light table you have set previously and just press the next or previous cell shortcut until you get the layer you want or you can just use this arrow if you haven't set a shortcut key for it the location for the shortcut key is in this animation then edit track then you will find this select previous cell and next cell and if you don't want to see one of the layer you can just hide them the control for this light table is pretty simple. You can do three basic edits. The first one is move. You can move the drawing just by click and dragging once you are in the edit mode. And to rotate, you just need to press Alt while click and dragging. And you can move this pivot point simply by clicking somewhere you want it to be. The last one is scaling. You can scale the drawing by just using these blue dots. If you want to reset the drawing, you can press this timer button and it will reset the drawing to the original state. 
Okay, let's start and do the in-betweening. I'm going to show you an example on how you can do the in-betweening. But before we start it, we need to add the previous and next frame. For this example, I'm doing the in-between of frame 38 and frame 42. So I'm going to drag those two frames into the light table. And I'm going to change the later frame color into red. I have my timing chart planned out for this animation already, but if you make your own animation, you might want to plan one before doing the in-between. I will explain shortly about how you can plan your own, but this is really not an in-depth tutorial. So there are many ways to do this timing chart, but the core example you need to know is basically if you have a drawing that is close together, it will create a slow movement, and if the drawing is further apart, it will move faster. So I make a couple example of a more common timing chart. So for the first example, the object is spaced with an equal distance. This way the object is moving at a constant speed. While in the second example, the object is spaced closer together at the beginning and further apart at the end. This way it gives the object illusion of acceleration. The slow art is usually used to give more impact at the end. The third example is opposite of the second one. It starts with a far spacing, then a tight one. This gives the object illusion of deceleration. You can use it usually for animating object that is coming to a stop. And for the last one, it have both slowing at the beginning and at the end. This gives the animation a more smoother movement overall. Alright, that's about it for the timing chart, and let's move on to the drawing we have here. I'm gonna do the in-between of frame 38 and 42. I decided to have a slow out here. Honestly, I kind of forget why I decided that, but whatever, I'm going to believe it for now. Also, I have a different chart for the left hand. It's in linear because I want it to move in a constant speed until frame 42. The reason why is because I already have a slow out starting at frame 36, and I want to have a slow in at frame 46 when the hand is finally resting on the table. So it's kind of a slow out and slow in chart if you look at it from frame 36 to 46 for the left hand. Okay, I'm going to start with the frame 41 because it's the halfway which make it easier to draw. So make a new frame. Then figure out the midpoint of the drawing. Just leave a few guide here and there to indicate it. Later we will rotate one of the reference drawing to align with our guide so we can just trace them. I'm going to pick this frame and hide the other one. Once you got it aligned, you can check them by flipping the frame and if you think it's good enough, you can go ahead and draw them. Now for the in-between of the face, I'm going to turn on the other reference and start aligning it as well at roughly at the same place. See, it didn't make much change in expression other than the mouth, so I'm going to just draw it as is. Next, I'm going to do the ponytail. I don't have any custom timing choice.
between drawing and you will hopefully have a nice and smooth animation. That's about it for this tutorial. You can skip to the end to watch the final animation. Thank you for watching and bye bye.